Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days, and when they were ended, he was hungry. Last week, we remembered Jesus' transfiguration, in which he shone with the glory of his divinity, giving his his disciples a glimpse of the glory of his resurrection. We'll contrast that with this week, the first week of Lent. This week, we hear nothing about the, the glory of Jesus' divinity and him shining in his full glory. Instead, this week, we see the full humanity of Jesus as he suffers very human sufferings. He feels the human temptation towards sin, the human attraction to listening to the words of the devil. He feels the very human pangs of a very human hunger. We might ask, why is Jesus even being tempted in the first place? Satan is no match for the Son of God. In his divine power, Jesus could have easily overpowered and destroyed the devil. And Satan knows this. He's no ma- he knows that he's no match for the power of God. In the battle of God versus Satan, Satan knows that he has already lost. But since Satan could not destroy God, he set out to destroy what God loves the most, humanity. Satan cannot destroy God, but he can destroy man by tempting him to sin and destroy man's relationship with God. And this is exactly what Satan has done and what he keeps on doing. In the Garden of Eden, Satan tempted Adam and Eve to choose sin and to reject God. Satan triumphed over man, bringing judgment and death into the world. And Satan has been seeking to destroy men and women by destroying their faith in God ever since. When Satan destroyed the flocks and the herds of Job, and he killed Job's sons and daughters, and he afflicted Job himself with painful sores, his purpose was to entice Job to sin by getting Job to curse God and thus destroy the love between God and man. When Satan attacks you, and entices you to sin. Make no mistake about it. His purpose is to destroy you by destroying your faith in God. If Satan can't destroy God, he's at least going to try to destroy you. And this is the very nature of Satan's temptation. When he tempted Adam and Eve to eat the forbidden fruit, his real temptation was to get them to think that God was holding out on them that God didn't really love them because he was holding back from them something that was the greatest good, the greatest delight and pleasure for them. When Satan attacked Job and, and his family, his real temptation was to try to get Job to think that God didn't care for him since God was the one who had allowed Job to suffer these attacks in the first place. Satan's purpose and temptation is always the same. When he entices you by your sinful desires, his goal is always to get you to think that God is holding out on you. If God really loved you, he would give you everything you want, including that thing that you really, really want that God has forbidden. Satan's attacks are always aimed at destroying our faith and our love for God. That's why Peter describes Satan as prowling around as a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. And the Apostle John, in his revelation, calls Satan the deceiver of the whole world. Yes, Satan wages war against the offspring of woman so that he might destroy what God loves most in his whole creation. And that's why in Lent we read about Jesus being tempted by the devil in the wilderness. As God... Jesus could have easily triumphed over Satan and cast him in the fiery pit from the very beginning without having to go through the whole business of becoming a man. But to do it that way would have left us high and dry. 
and Satan would have succeeded in his goal of separating God and man eternally. It's specifically as a man that Jesus had to triumph over the devil. That's what God said to Satan immediately after he had tempted Adam and Eve. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. God told Satan that it would be a man, it would be the offspring of a woman who would ultimately triumph over him. His attack on humanity was not going to succeed either. Sure, he had succeeded in leading astray Adam and Eve, but their offspring, their child, or descendant, would resist the temptation and overcome him. And in the fullness of time, that's exactly what happened. That man came forth, ready to do battle with the devil as a man, so that man might crush the devil under his feet. In the hymn, O Love, How Deep, How Broad, How High, this is exactly what we sing about. O love, how deep, how broad, how high, beyond all thought and fantasy, that God, the Son of God, should take our mortal form for mortal sake. That he would take our mortal form for mortal sake. That he would become a man so that as man he might crush and destroy the devil. In his baptism in the Jordan River, Jesus clothed himself with the full weight of human sin, ready to fight the devil for his beloved, not with the power of his divinity, but in the weakness of his humanity. He doesn't fight Satan in the temple of God, but in the wilderness, on the devil's own turf. He comes alone, not in the strength of the power of a divine conqueror, but weak and suffering from 40 days of fasting. And the devil, of course, couldn't help but be intrigued. He tempts Jesus, and his temptation is geared toward getting Jesus to act with the full power of his divinity. The devil wants Jesus to show his hand. He wants Jesus to forsake his incarnation, to forsake the path to victory over Satan as the seed of the woman, and to simply conquer him as the Son of God. If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. But Jesus resists the temptation. He doesn't even bring his divine resources to bear, but only his human resources. He answers back not with his own word, with his own divine and authoritative word, but simply with the Scriptures, the Word of God as it's given to man. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. It is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus doesn't take the bait. He doesn't strike down his enemy in the wilderness with his divine power Mere God would have obliterated the devil, conquered. Mere man would have been completely overcome by Satan's temptation. But God made man, the suffering servant, simply endured the temptation. And the text says that when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from Jesus until he had an opportune time. And so the devil continued to seek that time that he thought he would be able to force Jesus to act finally with his divine power to show his hand and thus ruin the chances of humanity's redemption. And by the devil's record, that opportune time came finally at the cross. The devil had set events into motion that week for Judas to betray his master and for the Sanhedrin to condemn Jesus to death and for Pontius Pilate to consent to the execution. Surely there, when he's about to be destroyed, Jesus must execute his divine power. He must come down from the cross and destroy his enemies. Or so the devil thought. Surely now his plan would succeed. Jesus would not endure the cross, and mankind would be forever swallowed up 
by sin and death. But the devil misread the opportunity. Even on the cross as he lay bleeding and dying, Jesus did not use his divine power to save himself. But instead he suffered the agonizing death of man. And precisely in this way was Satan's plan foiled. Mankind was redeemed through the death of a man whose blood paid the price for sin. We were reconciled to God. Satan was overcome by the seed of the woman. As Satan struck to bruise the heel, in so doing his head was crushed by the man. In Jesus' defeat of Satan, man triumphed over the devil. And so Satan is crushed beneath your feet, for you are baptized into Christ Jesus. His victory over Satan has become your victory. Even Satan's temptations cannot ultimately succeed against you, for you have in Christ reconciliation with God by the forgiveness of your sins. God does not lead us into temptation because he led his son, Jesus, into temptation. And Jesus' resistance to temptation has become your resistance to temptation. His death has become your death. His victory has become your victory. In Christ Jesus, the devil lies vanquished beneath your feet, and you are brought again, once again, into the loving arms of God, your heavenly Father. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.